Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Cliffhanger, brought to us by Sony ImageSoft. Cliffhanger is based on the 1993 action film starring Sylvester Stallone. This is just one of the many different versions of the Cliffhanger game that came out. Cliffhanger is also just another example of Sony ImageSoft creating games for the NES, late in the library, giving it mediocre graphics and gameplay, and being focused more on a point system than anything else. So here we go with Cliffhanger for the NES. Now we start out with the Sony ImageSoft logo or copyright screen and we'll actually get to our main screen in just a second. Now with Cliffhanger I actually do enjoy the soundtrack unlike a lot of the other Sony ImageSoft film games that came out. Also one of the few other good things that Sony ImageSoft did with these games was include plots from the actual movie in the game. After our opening cinematic, we go to our first level of the game, and you can see right away that the graphics are pretty terrible. This is actually a direct port of the Game Boy game of the same name. The cliffhanger game on Game Boy is the exact same game, just without the color at it, so they were probably really just focused on a Game Boy release and decided an NES release later on. You can see at the bottom of the screen we have our money system, which counts for our points. As you know, the plot of the cliffhanger movie was uh, the bad guys were trying to locate uh, three briefcases full of money that were scattered uh, throughout a range of mountains. You can actually find those three briefcases throughout the gameplay. Also, you can see our life count on the left side, and now on the right side you see a fist right now, and that's our weapon. You actually get a couple other weapons, including a knife and a gun. For the most part, the knife is just going to be thrown real quick, and then it goes away, and you'll actually get several shots with the gun. But for the most part, the fist ends up being the best weapon. You also saw in that first level I grabbed a pair of boots, and those are very crucial in getting. To run in the game, you must have the boots, and then you hold up and right or left in order to run, and this allows you obviously to jump farther. By doing this, you can get over a lot of the bigger gaps, as well as pretty much clear most of the enemies that are on the ground, which is pretty much highly recommended. Most of the enemies die after a few hits, they don't die in usually just one hit from your fist, but it's usually better just to jump over and bypass them without taking too much damage from them. Really, the only annoying enemy is in the game is actually just the level itself, being either the pitfalls and spikes in the levels, or falling objects such as rocks in this level as we now are climbing up a mountain, as well as you saw the little bits of snow that would fall, and then later on in the game we have caves where spikes are going to fall from the ceiling. Thankfully, in the game, you have a lot of health, so even though there is rocks constantly falling from the sky and other things that hit you, you have to get hit a lot, usually, to actually lose all your health. Most of the deaths that are going to come from this game is going to be from missing jumps and end up going into pits. There are a total of six levels in the game, each broken up into multiple sections, so this is actually the end of the first level, even though we've passed a couple of screens already. You actually don't get to the end of a level until you actually see the level completed screen. After each level, you see the amount of money that you've collected, and then usually goes into a cutscene. At the beginning of each level, you actually are frozen in place for a few seconds, and then the level actually begins. Thankfully, none of the enemies are moving either, but still, it's kind of weird that you're, like, frozen for a couple seconds, and then allowed to go. If they wanted to play that music, and then start the level, they could have done it at the black screen, and then come into the actual gameplay. It would have made a little bit more sense. At certain points, like just there, you have to actually defeat an enemy. If the screen seems like it won't scroll anymore, and you're not allowed to finish the level by going to the right side, 
you may have to defeat the enemy that's standing right there in order to continue. Most of these enemies just deliver a couple of quick punches to them, and they'll fall off screen, and then the screen will automatically scroll. Like right here, punch them, and then the screen actually moves itself. I actually picked up a knife during that part, so I was able to throw that at that enemy to take him out, and then move on to the next part of level 2. So you can see there that most of the enemies take several hits to kill, so usually it's better and quicker just to go past them. If you want to not take any damage during the course of this part, like right here, you can do some drop kicks to this guy so he won't be actually able to hit you. And you can get past him after about six or so hits. And when you do get used to the controls, it ends up being a little bit fun trying to see how far you can actually make your character jump, like running down these hills and then making long leaps over certain gaps. Sometimes on certain platforms you're going to have to build up your speed in order to make a running jump, so you usually go to the far side and if you don't think you're going to be able to start running, back up and then try again before attempting the jump. Watch out for the rolling rocks that come down the hill, there's another one there. And then after only a little bit more we'll actually be at our first actual boss of the game. Right here, here's our first boss, this guy in red, just keep punching him. Non-stop, just stand there and punch. Definitely not the most thrilling battle of all time, it's similar actually to the last action hero game where basically just standing in one place and punching a lot ends up being the most effective way to defeat most of the bosses. If you do have weapons of course you can use them on them, but you may want to save them for later on. After he's defeated, we end up in this cabin which is from the, the movie where Gabe ends up meeting back up with Jesse. And inside here is actually just two enemies, two wolves, as well as some supplies to build up your weapons again. Once you've collected the supplies inside this cabin, we'll actually be done this level. Kind of a weird little intermission level here. So right there I grab a gun and dynamite. I don't really recommend using the dynamite, it's really not that effective. And then on the opposite side we can pick up a rock, and a knife, and then an extra life, and then just go to the right side, the far right side, to exit this stage and go on to level 3. Now this is the beginning of level 3 and this is actually the first stage that contains one of the briefcases that contain the money. Now, I don't know if it's mandatory to collect them, but I always grab them, just to be sure. Also, by grabbing them, you'll get a big boost in your money count. Here's our first one. Climb this tree, get to the top of it, then jump up to grab it, and you can see your money count will shoot way up. You can grab a few extra supplies, including a knife and a gun, before continuing on in the stage. On the next screen, the second part of the stage will be a boss battle immediately as soon as we start up the next part. Make the very long jump over this long gap to get to here. The weird jumping thing here is you actually have to stop, stop pressing left or right, do a jump, and then press right or left in order to make it over some of those large cliffs. Now as soon as this battle begins, run over and immediately